Well, thank you very much, Suzanne, for that introduction, uh, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm delighted to be speaking at this um, FinTech Bridge China-UK conference this morning. Um, as Suzanne said, I'm a vice chairman of the China-Britain Business Council, uh, a dedicated UK-China trade association with some 65 years of doing business with China. We currently have 15 offices in mainland China, helping UK companies uh, set up and, and trade with Chinese companies. And increasingly, we're introducing UK companies to Chinese companies here in the UK, as the Chinese are arriving, and, and certainly in the last 10 years that I've been involved in this role, uh, we've seen a fantastic increase in the number of Chinese companies coming to the UK. We had a very successful outbound conference in Shanghai a month ago during the China International Expo Week, uh, where we basically promote the UK to, to China and Chinese companies, and we had several hundred attendees all interested in finding out more about the UK and the opportunities here. In March of this year, I also led uh, the then Lord Mayor of London's, the late Lord Mayor as he's now known, as he's handed over to the next one, not because he's expired. Um, I led his business delegation to China in March this year, where we visited five cities uh, in 12 days, a pretty hectic agenda. The Belt and Road, uh, FinTech and Green Finance were our three main themes. And FinTech, I know, will also be a major theme of the current Lord Mao's visit uh, to China, which is happening in March of 2019. In Shenzhen, which was the first city we visited, we held an important conference on FinTech, uh, hosted by the Shanghai Authority, together with the uh, British consulate from Hong Kong, the Hong Kong New Finance Institution, uh, and the Shanghai Innovation Institution. And we have much interest throughout our visit as we traveled on to Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Beijing uh, in FinTech from the Chinese side. So let me start by touching on some perhaps current perceptions of China you might have seen in the UK press and of economic and business issues relations between the two countries. Despite some downbeat assessments of the third quarter economic data, which have come perhaps on the back of trade tensions between the UK, sorry, between the US and China, I believe the fundamentals underpinning China's external trade are sound. We are still in the so-called golden era of bilateral relations uh, with China, started in 2015 with President Xi Jinping's successful state visit to the UK and my perception from my meetings and discussions in China over the last year or so <clears throat> is that China has made a long-term bet on the city of London, irrespective of the outcome of Brexit, and that is the last time I'll mention the B word, which, as we know, is anybody's guess at the moment. Certainly for companies exporting to China from the UK, in other words, for the businesses who make up the core of CBBC's membership, the picture remains highly positive. UK exports to China were up by nearly a third in 2017 and by nearly a further fifth in the first half of 2018. China now accounts for 7% of what the UK sells to the world, a tenfold increase from the position in the year 2000. And China is now our third biggest market. So at a time of great uncertainty for the UK and the world economy, the booming trade between the UK and China is a very positive thing. China is now putting a huge focus on high quality and high tech, including fintech development, and its shift to a more service and consumer driven economy is a very positive thing for the UK. The UK offers world beat beating education, healthcare, uh, consumer brands uh, for China's growing middle class. And Chinese consumers are using their fast growing spending power to buy products which allow them to share Britain's heritage. British creativity and the British lifestyle. Britain's traditional strength in financial and professional services is also highly relevant. At the 2018 Forum of Asia, President Xi Jinping announced a new round of policies to open up China's financial services sector. The limitations on foreign shareholdings in banks and asset management firms will be removed altogether. The cap on shareholdings in securities firms, fund managers, futures and life insurance companies will be increased to 51%, with the limit being removed altogether in three years. And these changes will hopefully allow 
Chinese and foreign financial firms to compete on an equal footing, and very encouraging news for the UK financial services sector. However, we fully appreciate that the market will take time to open up, given the dominance of local players. I was in Beijing just over a year ago, and we met the uh, uh, chief banking regulator, who said that foreign banks only accounted for 1% of the Chinese banking market. Uh, so that just goes to show how much there is to, to, is to go for. The UK also has a lot to offer on the Belt and Road Initiative, and our business delegation in March with the Lord Mayor included professional services firms, insurance companies, banks and infrastructure investors, as well as Lloyds of London and the London Stock Exchange. CBBC will do its very best to help the UK financial and professional services sector to win business through the Belt and Road Initiative. We were the first organisation to publish a Belt and Road report explaining the opportunities and implications for the UK economy. And this report was presented to President Xi during his state visit in 2015 by our chairman, Lord Sassoon. We're currently working on our fourth Belt and Road report, which will be launched hopefully in the first quarter of next year uh, during a, a Belt and Road Summit, which we are working on with, with partners. As China is rapidly modernizing and the market is becoming highly mobile and digital, what are the opportunities for the UK, and particularly the fintech sector? The UK is home not only to a vibrant fintech sector, but a well-rounded fintech ecosystem. To build upon this position, the UK is also actively engaging with leading fintech centers around the world, including China, to explore mutually beneficial opportunities. And this, of course, is the, is the topic of our conference today. As well as London being a world-leading fintech hub, the UK also benefits from clusters of fintech expertise around the country. And these hubs are underpinned by advantages that the UK has, including a culture of creativity, supportive regulators, and a pipeline of diverse digital and financial talent, making fintech a, a nationwide industry in the UK. We genuinely believe that the UK and China have complementary sets of expertise, which provide much opportunity for collaboration and knowledge sharing. This is a very exciting uh, journey for both parties to explore in this fast-moving sector. And one of the objectives of today's conference is about how we can work together to create an ecosystem for fintech, which is mutually beneficial and supportive of economic growth for the UK and China. London is a world leader for fintech, thanks to our regulatory environment, favorable government policy, and the involvement of everyone from major financial services providers to innovative tech startups. As such, London has the most valuable tech startup environment in Europe, valued according to one report I read at 44 billion US dollars. And over the past five years, 44% of every pound invested in European fintech has landed in the UK. Fintech earns more than £6 billion for the UK economy and employs over 60,000 people, uh, and that's a statistic that came from our Chancellor, and covers everything from mobile payments and digital banks to blockchain technology and crowdfunding platforms, just to name uh, a, a small number. London also employs more people in fintech than either New York or San Francisco, and one of the points that we made on our Lord Mayor's visit, or rather the Lord Mayor made, is that in the US, uh, the fintech industry, the regulators, and the financial center are separated by 3,000 miles of country. Whereas in the UK, you can't, well, you can walk, but it's literally within a, a mile or two of here, where you have the regulator down in Canary Wharf, you have the fintech industry, and you have the city of London all within uh, a taxi ride or a tube ride of each other. In terms, in terms of light touch regulation, the UK was one of the first countries in the world to introduce uh, a fintech sandbox, winning plaudits from the industry. But there are also questions of how regulators can keep on top of a rapidly changing sector and ensure consumers are protecting, protected. Striking a balance between stability and innovation the UK's Financial Conduct Authority is world leading in its support for fintech, and its regulatory sandbox has supported uh, some 60 firms, or probably more by now, to test innovations with real customers in the live market under controlled conditions. 
This pioneering approach has been exported worldwide and the FCA is collaborating with 11 and probably more regulators and global markets to develop a global sandbox. And this was very much a topic of discussion during our visit to China in March. So there, are, there is lots of potential for partnerships and I'm interested to hear from Suzanne about this afternoon's um, uh, sessions with uh, fintech companies, which I'm sure will be very interesting. And so on behalf of the China Britain Business Council, I'm delighted that we're partnering with FinTech Circle today to organize this FinTech Bridge Conference, uh, striving to build upon that bridge between the UK and China. I look forward to a day of great discussions, and I wish you all, all success in your Chinese endeavors. Thank you very much.